Welcome to our ninth video workshop for CPP Game Development Club on music and video games. Today we are going to be discussing why music in games is important and how you can make your own music. Although it's not necessary for gameplay, music in video games is still a vital component to a good game. It controls the narrative, establishes world building, and creates an emotional connection. Let's take a look at Skyrim for example. Skyrim is a medieval fantasy RPG where most of the gameplay is centered around the player going on huge quests, becoming involved in political conflicts, and being surrounded by magic. But the wonderful thing about Skyrim's atmosphere is the music. It's very peaceful and melodic, but it has a lot of range. It's been the center of many fantasy medieval music soundtracks for many years. The music manages to match the theme and aesthetic of the game perfectly. The great thing about it is it changes based on location and situations. Jeremy Soule, who's the composer for the Skyrim soundtrack, wrote the music for different situations that range it ranges from tranquility to tense combat. His music, Caught Off Guard, Blood and Steel, Silent Footsteps, and Death or Sovereign Guard are good examples of how the music changes in those tense situations, and how there are different emotions that go along with each of them respectively. Some things to think of when determining your music is what is the atmosphere like? Is it a horror game located in an old cabin in the woods? Is it a futuristic dystopian city? Or maybe a relaxing farm? What position are you putting the player in? Is it intense combat where the music is fast and loud? Or is it a stealth mission where the music is much quieter but played in shorter, faster, more intentional notes? Is the player safe? Softer, slower, upbeat, happy music are good ways to let your player know that they are. That kind of music should make them more relaxed and at ease. Matching, matching the mood, location, and situation are a great way to gauge different emotions from a player and make them more immersed in your game. Okay, so how can we actually do this? Sounds are just vibrations in the air traveling at different speeds. Faster vibrations have a higher pitch, while slower ones have a lower pitch. We limit ourselves to specific frequencies in certain intervals. We use notes to identify what we're playing. Calling the notes by their frequency would be really tedious, so we give them single letter names based on their position on the piano. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Piano keys that are next to each other are a half step apart. The two most important intervals are the half step and the octave. An octave is a change in pitch by eight notes, or a change in frequency by two. For example, if a given note is 440 Hz, also known as middle C, then an octave up would be 880 Hz, and an octave down would be 220 Hz. Notes that are an octave apart sound the same, just higher or lower pitch. They also have the same letter name. Accidentals are used to indicate alterations of a note or a key signature. A lowercase b is used to indicate that a note is flat, which is a half step down. A sharp sign, a hashtag, pound sign, is used to indicate that the note is sharp, a half step up. The natural sign is used to indicate that the note should be played as is, as normal, with no changes to the pitch at all. Multiple notes playing at the same time are called chords. They can range from being as simple as two notes to be being extremely complicated combinations. Chords can either be harmonic or dissonant, which means without harmony. This explanation is extremely condensed and omits a lot of important things, but these are the basics that are pretty helpful to know for music composition. There are five major components of composition. Harmony, rhythm, melody, and instrumentation, instrumentation and structure. These components are all extremely interconnected. Harmony is the choice of chords in a simultaneously played note in a song. Typically, songs or section of songs can be oversimplified into a repeating sequence of chords called chord progression. A lot of pop songs actually use this use the same four chords, such as songs like Don't Stop Believing by Journey, You're Beautiful by James Blunt, Whereas the Love by Black Eyed Peas, which is all demonstrated in Axis of Awesome's Four Chords mega cover. I'll have the link in the description. For beginners, the best way to start out 
with Harmony is to try and copy the chord progression of a song you like, but make it unique in your own way using other components. If you're a bit more knowledgeable about music theory already, you could also try com coming up with your own chord progressions by picking a key and then playing triads that are in key, then adding other chords to your repertoire like suspended chords, seventh chords, and so on. Rhythm is the timing of the music. Rhythm is a broad term, because entire sections or songs followed, follow broad rhythms, but individual parts can have their own rhythms. On a song-wide scale, there's tempo and meter time signature. Songs typically stay at a consistent speed throughout, and the speed of the song is its tempo. Tempo is written as beats per minute, where the beat is defined by the song's time signature. A time signature defines the song's beats and measures. Most music is based around the number 4, with the single measure being defined as a four quarter notes, known as 4-4 four four time signature, where the top number is the number of notes, and the bottom is the type of note, which matters very little except for sheet music, to be honest. Besides 4, the other common number used is 3-6, another common time signature is 6-8 tempo, and time signature aren't necessarily played by the instruments of the song, but they can be implied. Different kinds of notes tell you the different kinds of speeds as well. Quarter note is a single beat, which is in the middle here. Each quarter note makes up a whole measure. A half note consists of two quarter notes together, which takes up half of a measure. A whole note takes up a whole measure because it's four beats. And an eighth note is half of a quarter note, which means one single eighth note takes up an eighth of a measure. Individual instruments and sections of songs can have their own rhythms, which are patterns that may or may not be repeated only by that specific instrument. Each individual note has its own length and combining notes of varying length. You can create interesting rhythms inside of melodic or chordal sections. Percussion typically serves the role of guiding the song's rhythm by explicitly playing the tempo out, but even the percussion can add embellishments and extra rhythmic parts to make a song more interesting. Melody is the tune of the song, the catchy bit, sequences of singular notes that are nice and pleasing to the ear. While songs with only one melody do exist, some songs will have multiple distinct melodies, a concept called polyphony, or multiple voices at the same rhythm but with its notes at a distinct harmonic intervals that typically try to match up with the chords of song. This is called harmonization. Melody is strongly linked to both rhythm and harmony. In the case of rhythm, the rhythm of an individual melody is one major component that can make or break a song. In the case of harmony, melodies are often limited by and barred to the current chord being played or implied by other instruments, but they can also bend or break from those chords in order to be more interesting. A good rule of thumb for beginners is to use the concept of passing tones in anchor notes. Anchor notes are good notes that match the current chord being played and are best placed on strong beats like the first or the third in a 4-4 time signature. Passing tones are notes that guide one anchor note to the next, but don't necessarily need to match the current chord. Megalovania is one of the best examples of a song that effectively utilizes harmony. The song has multiple examples of both polyphony and harmonization in its melodies. The bass line is a special type of melody that is played in lower ranges of human hearing. It's typically used to ground a song to a chord progression, which means a bass line benefits more from having anchor notes, especially the root note of a chord. Although having passing tones is still acceptable and can even be spiced up, at a, at, spice up as a bass line. Instrumentation is the choice of instruments. It's pretty self-explanatory. The reason this is important is because instruments and sounds are not only one frequency. The notes that an in instrument is playing is defined by the fundamental lowest frequency, and overtones, which are extra frequencies, give the instrument its unique sound. Instrumentation is often subjective and dependent on the genre you'd like to compose, but keep in mind that you can do pretty much anything you want. Structure is how a song is organized on a macro scale. For example, a typical pop song is often organized into a stanza 1, chorus, stanza 2, chorus, bridge, chorus structure. Structure can zoom in a bit more.
chorus, for example, might be organizi or organized as two distinct bars made of two different chord progressions. A good example is Undertale's Bone Trussle. On a wide, a song-wide scale, has a short intro, a stanza, which lingers on one note, and a chorus, where the lead becomes a string instrument and the bass line starts bouncing everywhere. The stanza is basically the repetition of the phrase twice, but on the second repeti repetition, the melody is harmonized. The chorus follows a more complicated pattern, an A, B, A, C pattern where the A phrase is repeated twice, but resolves with a different phrase, with the C phrase resolving back into the intro. Giving your song an interesting structure and adding small little details and embellishments here and there on repeated bits can make a song sound more human and less repetitive. It's a very simple concept, but can be extremely powerful. Establishing a pattern and then breaking it is why the A, B, A, C structure works extremely well. Bone Trestle again does this very well with the C phrases also coming with an instrumental change. Here are some tips before we wrap it all up. Silence is loud. Sometimes dropping an instrument part or two briefly during a section can really emphasize when all of the instruments come back. Consider the second chorus of Life Light from Smash Ultimate. The orchestra stops only for a beat, and yet that single change makes that chorus much more distinct from the others. Dropping the drums or the bass line on the repetition of a section in general can work to either bring down the energy or bring up the energy of the next section. If you don't know how to play drums, learn two drum fills and one basic beat. Play the basic beat for four measures, end the measure with one fill, and end the second with the other one. Just loop that entire for four measures of the entire song and you're good to go. And music composition rules are more like suggestions. Music is an art form, so you can do whatever you want. You can break the key you're in, omit some anchor notes, play a song in I need time signature, but the rules are there for a reason. Following them and understanding why they work is important. Float before you swim. Now to wrap it all up, we have some Miguel recommended programs to make music in. First off is beatbox.co. It's free browser-based composition application. It's good for beginners and just something to mess around with to see how composing music works. I have a video that I will plug in the description as long as all the links to download any of these um, apps that I'm going to be talking about here. The next one is LMMS. It's a free open source application. It's pretty powerful. Um, something else he recommends. Reaper. It's free, highly customizable, and very powerful, but it has the steepest learning curve, and you will very likely need to install some external VST plugins or download sound fonts. Uh, but it is also another very good free one. Soundtrap is another free browser app. Pay with a paid premium mode, it's good for collaboration, very similar to how Google Docs works, and I will also have a video of how that one can work in the description. So thank you all for coming to our ninth video workshop.